Hi guys, welcome. Today we're going to do some data analysis. So here, we have the data of sleep quality and job performance sample of 30. So 18 females and 12 males. So we need to uh, answer these questions if there is a significant relationship between insomnia and job performance of the respondents, is there a significant difference in the level of sleep quality when they are grouped according to sex, is there a significant difference in the level of job performance when they are grouped according to sex. So, first, we're going to need our hypothesis and null hypothesis for these questions. So I've prepared them beforehand so that this video won't get long. So the first one, is there a significant relationship between insomnia and job performance of the respondents? So we want to know if there is a relationship between insomnia and job performance. So that will be our hypothesis and our null hypothesis, you just reverse the hypothesis. So there is no significant relationship between insomnia and job performance. So in order to have an idea if there is a relationship or not, we're going to need to compute the correlation. Because as it says here, Correlation is the degree of relationship of two variables. So we have two variables here, sleep quality and job performance. And this sleep quality thing tells the level of insomnia. Okay, we're going to need this scoring guides later. Okay. So going back. Uh, coefficient of correlation R ranges between negative 1 to positive 1. So here are your criteria for R. So when you have 0, zero no correlation. So they are not related at all. Sleep quality and job performance, for instance, here. But if it's negative 1, perfect negative. So and positive one is perfect positive so here it says that positive correlation if you have a positive number for the coefficient of coefficient of correlation uh, as x increases y also increases so both increasing when so in this case uh, as insomnia level increases sleep also increases if the correlation coefficient is positive or r is positive when uh, there is a negative correlation or if r is a negative number uh, as insomnia levels increase job performance decreases so let's start Okay, let's switch screens. Okay, um, I'm going to use an application software called JASP. Let's open JASP for this data analysis session. Okay, so let's open our CSV file. So I've already made a CSV file out of this data. Uh, okay, let's open computer documents sleep job birth data CSV. Okay, there. So I said earlier we need for the first one for this question and hypothesis uh, we need to find the correlation. So here in order to do that we need to go to regression, classical correlation, 
Okay, there we go. So we need the sleep quality and job performance variables because we're finding the relationship between insomnia and job performance. Okay, so let's check display pairwise and scatter plots. What else? Okay, I think that's all. Okay, here we have the R value of negative 0.17. So, and also a P value of 0.368. So, the P, this P value tells us the percentage that we were we are likely to reject the null hypothesis or that we do not reject the null hypothesis rather so going back to correlation so we have an r here of negative point negative point 17 so 17 rather uh so, it means that we have a negative correlation. Therefore, likely as the level of insomnia increases, the job performance decreases. So, we are 36.8 percent sure because this 36 because p is 0.368 so times 100 that's your percentage we are 36.8 percent sure that there is a significant relationship between insomnia and job performance because this p value here is higher than the significant significance or your alpha of 5% it said that if the p value is greater than greater than the significance level We do not reject the null hypothesis. And what else? So, therefore, the answer for number one, where is it? Where's my cake? There. So, 36.8% likely that there is no significant relationship between insomnia and job performance. Because it's higher. The p-value is higher than the significance level of 5%. Then, next is this question. Is there a significant difference in the level of sleep quality when they are grouped according to sex? So, we want to find out if uh, there is a significant difference or none. Not really. Okay. So, for that, we need to do a t test. Because a t test measures the size 
of the difference relative to the variation in the sample data. So, let's calculate this t-test. Okay. So here in JASP, uh, we go to t-tests. And then, uh, let's go with independent samples t-test. Because likely we're, we're going to have unequal variances here. Because we have more females than males. So the sample space of the females are greater than the males. So likely variance will be different. That's why we're going to use independent sample t-test. So, the first one, going back, uh, we need the first, or rather the second question here, uh, we need to find out if there is a significant difference in the level of sleep quality when they are grouped according to sex. So, we need the sleep quality data and sex as the grouping variable. So, male and female. What is the difference of the sleep quality of males versus females? Okay. As compared to females versus like no. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to compare the sleep quality of males and females. Okay. Let's also check Welch. Let's check Welch because, and we need the descriptives so that we're going to have, yeah, means SD and SE here, standard error. Okay. I believe Welch is the one used in Microsoft Excel uh, analysis tool pack because when I tried Microsoft Excel earlier, this is what I got. I got this value earlier. Okay. What do we, what else do we need here? We don't need that really. Okay, so let's name this first. Significant relationship between insomnia and job performance. So for the second one, let's name it. Significant difference, difference between Am I getting this right? Ayan. In the level of sleep when group according Anala. Let's make it short based on sex Okay So here we have our results of the test so we have here, here around 2.8 so if we have a large t value so there is likely a significant difference but here we have small small uh, values because this is 2.8 is close quite close to zero and notice here we have our p-value almost 0 0.01 so in welch 
0.009. So when we talk about p values, so 0.9% likely that we're going to we're going we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. So therefore a uh, p-value here is less than the significance level of 5%. So, 5%. So, this is around 1%. So, we're going to, we're going to reject our null hypothesis. So, we're going to reject null hypothesis. So, likely, so 0.1% likely that there is no significant difference in the level of sleep quality when the respondents are grouped according to sex. So, likely, there is no difference. Uh, so, let's look at the mean here in the descriptives. So, when you see the mean, so for females, we have 20.611 and for male, 14.917 respectively. So, let's go back to our scoring guide. So, remember, mean is average. So, Mean here in for females, so mean is 20.611 for females, mean, meaning that this is the average sleep level for females likely based on this sample data. While for males, the, the sleep quality level is 14.917. So let's go back to our sleep quality scoring guide here. So... For females, we have 20, around 20, right? So, that falls under clinical insomnia. While for males, we have... What's the number again? Uh, we have 14. So, they're, clo they're close to each other. So, males have... Average of the males in the sample data have sub-threshold insomnia while, while for the females, they have average of them here have clinical insomnia, moderate severity. So, so our cal our calculate our data here supports these calculations that we got that we reject our null, null hypothesis and therefore for this question is there a significant difference in the level of sleep quality when they are grouped according to sex there is no significant difference so almost they both have insomnia <laughs> Males and females both have insomnia. Okay. Moving on. So for this one, is there significant difference in the level of job performance when they are grouped according to sex? So, we're talking about significant difference again. So, another t-test. <laughs> okay. In independent samples t-test just like the other one, the previous one because it's still based on grouping so is there a difference between the job performance between male and female a male and a female okay so we're going to select job performance this time for the dependent variable and sex for the grouping variable okay let's check welch 
for comparison. And also descriptives. Okay. Let's name this significant difference. Difference of job performance based on sex. It should be gender. <laughs> huh. But never mind. Sex, okay. Male or female. Uh, no, they said that sex and gender are different things. Gender is identity and sex is biological according to some people. Okay, so going back. So, we did the T-test we, we did the test for the job performance based on sex so here's what we got for the t value we got negative 2.086 or around 2.1 2.2 respectively so this so this is different so we can disregard the negative sign here take the absolute value so still this is closer to zero so and then looking at p values here we have around 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0.02 0 0.03 P values so so likely around three three point eight or four point six percent to four point six percent that sure that there is no significant difference in the job performance based on sex okay so looking at our mean here so for female we have 69.111 and for male 75.333 so let's go back to our scoring guide okay so let's put this side by side and the significant this one Wait. Can we collapse this? Okay, there. So, we're looking at the means, right? Uh, for females, we have the job performance around the average job performance is around 61 to 80, 69. Eh? So, the average females here exceed the expectation as well as males because 75 is still under 61 to 80. So, our sample here supports our computation here, our calculation that there is no, there's likely no significant difference in job performance based on sex. Both are great performers. So, for that question, is there a significant difference in the level of job performance when they are grouped according to sex? 
there is no significant difference in the level of sleep. Oh, why is, why is this sleep? Rather, in the level of job performance. Let's change that. Job performance. When the respondents are grouped according to sex. So this is our answer for question number three or question C. There is no significant difference in the level of job performance when the respondents are grouped according to sex. So males and females are both great performers likely based on this sample data. So there you have it. I hope you learned something in this video. If you do, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And that's it for now. I hope that you have a great day. Bye now.